Hello everyone and welcome to The Jump. It is great to have your company. I hope you've had a fantastic week and it's about to get even better because Andrew Gaze and Leonard Copeland are with you to kickstart the weekend. Welcome, lads. Yes, thank you, Nat. And uh, we're getting to that pointy end Ooh, of the yes. uh, NBA. Play on NBA time, Gaze. It's excitement. You can feel it in the air, that's can't right, you? You right. can. You can also feel a little bit of tension because we've had players and coaches arcing up in press conference. Oh, yes. So there's plenty to unpack on the show today. So make sure you stick around. But let's kick things off, of course, with the jump starters. Thanks, of course, to DoorDash, your delivery MVP, the official delivery partner of the NBL. And the Lakers are once again a hot topic. Surprise, are we talking surprise. about the Lakers again? Yes, Come on, they, man. Are. they are in danger of missing the play-in tournament, of course. Now, just how they turn their fortunes around is the big question. And this is the answer from Russell Westbrook. <laughs> Rush to either that now you guys are actually the 11th seed, <clears throat> so you're out of the playing game. What changes going forward? Nothing, man. Nothing. And why is that? Because it doesn't. What does it change? We still got games to play. Other teams still got games to play. We still got to play teams that's above us in the play-in. Don't really change much. Thank you, Russ. What do you think should change? Winning. Winning. Okay, that's obvious. What do you think should change? Winning. Winning games, playing hard. Mm -hmm. Ask you ask the question I gave you an answer. That's fine. You got the answer to winning? Hi. You have the answer to winning? I'm not out there playing. Maybe I think I'm you give me the answer for future. <laughs> exactly. So well, I don't have the answer. You know, I, exactly. If so you don't have it, you out there, so I can't you have ask it. Me, why you, you ask me to have an answer. You don't have it either. Well, maybe. but I don't play, Russell. If you, I want to get the information from you, so that I can I'm give it one to person, champ. Right. It's a team okay. game, right. so I don't, I don't have an answer. Okay. You know, I may have it. I but, don't have it. So good. But I'm asking the pros who know the game, play the game. Yeah, yeah. What you guys, what you think you can do to make it. Your point, yeah. their point, everybody's point. Sure. That's what I'm asking. No, I really, man. Okay. I respect that. Okay. You got that? Y'all got that? No. Y'all got yeah. it? No, respect. We can read. We can read. Really. It's good. We can read. Y'all got that? <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Y'all got it. Make sure you record that. <laughs> that was Brad Turner hey, from the LA Times. He wanted to smack you. Oh, That's what he wanted to do. But Brad held his own because if that was me in that situation, I would be like, yes, Russ, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. bye. No, but Run the thing away. is, it's a valid question. You're looking for an explanation for why this team with its star-started lineup, everyone thought was going to be a championship contender mm -hmm. before the start of the yeah. season. And now... I actually don't think they're going to make that playing game. You look at the San Antonio Spurs, and as Russell uh, mentioned, that they've got some games with teams ahead of them. So it's going to be a, a real challenge. And the way they're playing, Copes, it is sad to watch. The Lakers we used to be must-watch television, but now in some of the games, the amount of points they're giving up and their lack of intensity, particularly on the defensive end, it's embarrassing. And Frank Vogel, I... I'm, I'm watching these games and I'm thinking, well, if what, how do you change this? As they've been so good for so long. Now, everyone loves, misery loves company. People want to see them fail now. And Russell's probably just sick of hearing that, but you're the professional. You're making all the money. Tell us why you, play, you guys are playing so well. Well, here's the thing. Here's the answer. This is what has to change. Get your butt back on on defense. Some of the games we're seeing them play, yep. even the great... LeBron, uh, God love him, superstar, arguably the greatest of all time, not in my opinion, but arguably by some. Uh, I've seen some games where he's coming down there and they're playing this up-tempo style. He ain't even getting in the, yeah, in the right. frame of the camera when they get back That's into the exactly half court. Right. So it's, there, there has to be change. And just to say, well, nothing's going to change. Well, if, that's, if nothing changes, ta-da, see you later. Get your popcorn out and you can watch <laughs> the finals on the television. And that's what's going to happen. That's what's gonna... I think the problem here is, though, I, and I go back to this every time. These guys are on so much money. They're mm. not worried about whatever everybody else is saying. Look, I'm paid. I'm going to go home. I'm going to live in my big house and eat my great food. Whatever happens, happens. Now, at some stage, people that are paying this money to come mm. watch you play are going to get mad, and that's what's happening. Yeah. Well, this year, we did see Russell Westbrook earlier on. Uh, actually, it was probably a few weeks ago in a press conference. Very emotionally uh, plead for people to stop writing things, calling yeah. Russell Westbrook, the, the impact he's having on his family. <laughs> so, yeah, they are making money, but I, for some of them, they are they 
definitely do it get hurts, affected. It hurts yeah. the athletes. It yeah, hurts. of course it does. Speaking of players who may be lacking a little bit of motivation, what is going on with James Harden? Because when that trade went through, we were thinking, Joel, James, it's a dynamic duo. They're going to be unstoppable. Yeah. And he started on fire, of course, but he is struggling at the moment. What is the fix? Because to me, it doesn't look like he's enjoying his basketball copes. I think what's happening is, again, I, I, I can't keep talking about this, but these guys are so spoiled, man. They're so spoiled. They're so privileged to be in this position that the winning doesn't matter as much to them. Back in the day when guys like Charles Barkley and those guys, you know, were, were, were making little money, mm. they were keen to try to make more money, yes, but win championships. These guys have everything made. Right? They haven't made right When now. you say little money, they're still making mega <laughs> Three million dollars a year. Yes, these guys are on 40. 40 How do you live on three million dollars a year? Sure, you do it all the time. But these guys are, these guys are making 40 and 50 million dollars no. a year. But surely the lure of a championship and that to legacy some. that you can leave behind at the Philadelphia 76ers, surely that means something. Mm. Well, I, I saw that um, Doc Rivers, and he came out and he said he's trying to fit in and get the guys going. And I told him, no, thank you. Be yourself and we'll fit around you. So, so really? he is actually trying to get him to be more like the James Harden with, 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 that was in Houston where he was shooting a lot more. Now, if you look at his numbers, and it's a reasonably small sample size, but his numbers right now at Philadelphia are almost exactly the same as, as what they were when they were at the Nets So, so uh, in this season. Yep. So, yeah, he, he's um, shooting it a little bit better and maybe a point or two more. But it's basically the same. So he, there hasn't been any huge drop-off. It's just trying to find that fit. If you're a coach, how do you fire him up? Well, I think that, you, as you guys have alluded to, you're talking about, hey, we, we have the opportunity to do something really special here. We have a chance to win a championship. And James Harden, forget about all the bravado. For his legacy, he needs to win a championship. He's, he's ticked me pretty much every other box. Yep. And, and he's been so close in the past. So I think right now, as you get to the pointy end, you start to sh sharpen things up and you don't have that that arduous task of uh, at the start of the season, you're thinking, gee, this is 82 games. It's a long, long way to the finish line. Right now, they're right at the finish line and put themselves in a good position. I'm going to bombard his social media just saying, <laughs> Kyrie Irving's a better player than you. Oh, all all day. that's just a great motivation. Fire him up. Maybe that'll get him going. Yep, I yeah. love it. I love the way you're thinking, Copes. Now, the Grizzlies are in sensational form, and I absolutely love the Kiwi centre in Stephen Adams. We've seen mm. him lift up teammates. He is a man <laughs> mountain, but he's also a rebounding machine. He set a new franchise record for offensive rebound. He's averaging 10 per game. Yep. He is in stellar form. So is it dumb luck or is there an exact science to rebounding? Now I hit the rim. It's going to uh, click and go back this way. Boom, here, here. Click and go that way. Boom, that way. Click here and go back this way. If you were trying to describe the science of offensive rebounding to somebody that knows nothing about offensive rebounding, how oh, would okay. you do it? Yeah, just stand on the opposite side that they're shooting. Yeah, that's basic enough. Um, Typically, the ball bounced that far. Um, that's as basic as it goes, but you can go into the Dennis Rodman. I reckon he's major science. He's talking about like the rotations of the ball, and you know, he's wild, bro. Like, that's different level. No, I'm too stupid for that, mate. You know what I mean? Not enough brain cells for that one, brother. I just, just, just stand there, mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That I made love me it. love him even yeah. more. No, and you know, the thing about it is, is rebounding is a lot of effort. It's it's determination, and there's some fundamentals about boxing out. But when you're Stephen Adams, you've got his size. That's coach. right, his size. You, you, you see it here. There, there is also, I think, a bit of an instinct for the ball. Yep. Now you can condition yourself that he's right. If you get the opposite side to where the the, the shots being taken, then you've got a statistically, apparently you've got a better chance. So there are some numbers in it, but this is just a lot of the times brute strength and size and uh, a will and a desire to go after the ball. If the coach is telling you, go out and get me 10 rebounds and you have that kind of size, mm. I think it's easy. Mm. You know, Dennis Rodman, yeah. yeah, he talks about the science, but he was the man when he came yep. to rebounding. He was the best rebounder ever. So both guys, I hear both sides of the mm. story. Have we underrated the Grizzlies, just quietly, because they're second in the West at the moment, but they're 18-2 and two without Ja Morant, who we've banged on about all year. Mm. That's quite incredible, isn't it? Yeah. I, I think, look, they're going to do well. They've, they've done well so far, but what's going to happen is, because they're such a young team, they'll get to the playoffs, 
And in the NBA, you have time now to study teams uh, when you're in the playoffs. Yeah. You, so I'm, I'm going to shut that offense down. Um, and that'll and, and they'll make the first round, but they'll get knocked out in the, in the second well, round. Well, John Moran, he's an interesting story in that he's brilliant. He's one of the great players to watch these days. He is a human highlight yeah, reel so with good. some of the stuff that he's do. He's a smaller guy, a, a reasonably lightweight. But as you alluded to, the numbers when he is not there, 18 and 2. Crazy. And not only that, if you look, if you break it down even further and you, you look at the defensive numbers, they're averaging, you know, like uh, six less points per possession, per 100 possessions when he's there. So he's defensively, he's not uh, in that elite category. Right. But when you look at this overall team and he's who's superstar status, I think from what Copes is saying is a valid point, that when the playoffs c c come in and then you've got that scouting, that defensive intensity... That time. He's the sort of guy, though, that you need on your team because he can do things just with sheer athleticism. Yeah. So all the all the scouting in the report, we're going to show on, a, on an on-ball screen, we're going to do all that type of stuff, but if you just got this athlete that you're just throwing the ball and create, create shots for himself, that's going to be... If I'm 18-2 and two and I'm the coach, I'm going to say, Josh, sit out this one, yo. <laughs> no. Listen, oh, you I'm 18-2 without him. I'm 18-2 without him. I'm going to sit him down. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Hey, I'm being dumb today. I'm going to sit him down. 18-2, and two, I got a better Would you even trade him? Get him out of here. He's out of here. Oh, <laughs> you are ridiculous. All right, that was the jump starters. Thanks, of course, to DoorDash, your delivery MVP. Now, Gazy. Yes. You came in hot today, ranting oh. and raving Beaming. about no. Denver Nuggets guard. Um, Austin Rivers no. being ejected. What is going on here? This is crazy. Copes, you'll like this because here's a situation when you've got a guy and, and talking about how the league's getting soft, that there's a little bit of altercation in that mm. game. But then we have a look at, have a look at this, Copes. So Austin Rivers got involved in a, a bit of tit for tat. Um, uh, earlier on in the contest, and this is what ultimately here you see the see the other you know, right lifts the right arm. No contact. There was no contact. No contact whatsoever was made. Have it. See this action here. Do you know what happened after this? What happened? Ta-da! See you later. Drew, let me tell you why though. He because, got thrown out of the game. Yeah, because they were trying to stop the. They didn't want anything to happen, Drew. It was about to happen. The, the you can't send can't someone, send out, someone out. out. I got him a game one time for looking at a referee the wrong way. So sometimes the referees take, are having a bad day. Get him out of here. No, what? because <laughs> that is outrageous. You can't yeah. get kicked out for almost hitting a guy with an elbow. Yeah, yeah, you you, you, you can't. can't. Well, and, and that wasn't all that aggressive. What are the, what are the officials saying now, though? What, did they say they made a mistake or what? Well, I hope they did. I don't know what the byproduct was, but I, it's it's a. An exaggerated example of the, uh, uh, the trying softer. to sanitise the league to a point where you're taking out just normal basketball plays. I don't think it was even a flagrant. No. Is that the worst? The he had you've a ever technical seen. foul before that, though, didn't he? Didn't he have a technical yeah, foul he, before? He, that? Did, there he is. had one. Yeah. yeah. But, the, the, that's but you still have to make contact, don't you? Well. Well, you can't. I, I get if you fake, but it wasn't like I. Ooh, no. He go boom. It didn't look aggressive in normally any used, way. Normally, used to flinch when I do that. <laughs> yeah, you know, All right, let's <laughs> move on to the Phoenix Suns because they have won 62 games. Yay, 62, Phoenix! And we're finally talking about them on this show. They are bath. Mm far the best in the West. Is mm. injury the only thing that is going to stop them from taking out the title? Listen, usually Chris Paul gets hurt right around playoff time. <laughs> oh, God, don't do this. No, he do does do every this, year. I mean, he's had some bad luck. He's had some bad luck. He luck. has. He, he has. gets hurt. But he's had his injury beforehand now. He's back. <laughs> he's got they're it out winning. of his system. They're, they're winning. He's out of the system. They're winning without him. That He's come back and dropped 14 assists or 15 assists in the first game back. They're solid. They play well without him. They, they have the best record in the West. They have home court advantage. Mm. Expect the Phoenix Suns. And then last year they went to the finals and lost. Mm. Expect them to win it this are, year. Are they the most even side that you've seen? Yeah, they are. And uh, I think Chris Paul uh, copes is right. The way in which he runs the team is going to be really important in the playoffs. And he, he de absolutely needs to stay healthy. And this team, we, we, I don't know whether they're getting the accolades that, that 
you'd expect for a team. If, now, if they win their last six games, I think that their win-loss record is going to be in the top six all-time records for the regular season. So they're playing some spectacular basketball. But uh, I don't know whether they've got the same advantage. You, you don't, I don't see them as being as invincible of, as other teams that have gone down. He's more part. excited to talk about the Lakers, who are in last place, rather than talking about the Phoenix Suns, who are no. in first place. Yeah, and they've well. been that way the whole no, no. year, Daniel. Yeah, no, and I'm excited. And I actually hope they go all the way. Yeah. I think that to see a, a different team come in and, and a different market get some reward, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that they will. So the Suns beat the Warriors during the week. Of course, the Warriors don't have Steph Curry at the moment. But mm. uh, a little bit of frustration showing here because Draymond Green and Jay Crowder having quite a few words. So there is tension mm. in San Fran at the moment. What do you make of this? Well, I just think it's playoff time. It's, it's getting around that time where mm. people start talking trash and letting you know yeah, you guys are winning, but you, we, we've won ours already. You got to get yep. to where we've been. Don't get cocky. Don't get don't get arrogant. Mm. That's what they're saying. No, well, uh, apparently Draymond Green, and you'd be able to relate to this, was mm -hmm. saying to Jay Crowder there that uh, hey, you were you were raised in Buckhead in Atlanta, which is where the rich people. That's all the rich people. You don't know a little bit soft. Yeah, you don't know where we come that's from. Right. So. We come from the hood. You you up in the Beverly Hills, bro. So just calm down a little bit. So, but I think that um, the, the Warriors, if they get their group back, and we haven't seen it over the last uh, quarter or even half, the last mm. second half of the season, but if, that, if Steph comes back and he's firing up, Draymond Green, such an integral part of what they're doing, I'd be a little nervous if I was the Phoenix Suns of trying to... To, to, to might, might be a rattle too the late. cage. It might be a little bit too late right now. Jordan. Maybe, but but if they, they, they've been together and they've done this so many times before that uh, you reckon that they still, if they can get healthy, that'd be a decent chance. All right, still plenty more to come on the jump. Kane Pittman's about to jump into the hot seat and give us the latest on a coach that's under fire in the NBL. Stay with us. Melbourne United go on a 28 8 run to win the game. Return May shot clocks at four. He's got no choice. Go on it! Man of the moment, he picks it up and just dribbles out the clock, and that'll do it. Big time win from Sydney. On the road, under man, all kinds of guys stepping up. Leaders back to seven. It's going to be too little, too late. Game over. Adelaide were brilliant. Southeast Melbourne Phoenix now to ponder how they recapture their best form. So the Phoenix yeah. have lost five of their last six games. They've dropped out of the top four. And to help us unpack exactly what is going wrong, let's welcome in our basketball insider from ESPN.com.au, Kane Pittman. Kane, welcome to you. Well, it's good to be here. And uh, the Phoenix have a big weekend coming up this Ooh, yeah. weekend. You already mentioned they've lost five of six. And I think it's easy to forget... This team was 11 and 5 yep. at one point in yep. this season. And when we were discussing who was going to make the top four, uh, we kind of assumed that the Phoenix were going to be there. We were worried about Illawarra. We were talking about where Sydney started the season uh, off not too well. So the Phoenix are definitely feeling the pressure. This loss to Adelaide uh, was extremely disappointing when you look at the race towards the playoffs. I caught up with Simon Mitchell during the week because the added element to this is the fact that he doesn't have a contract for next season so the timing of this skid for the phoenix uh, is not great uh, this is what simon had to say my focus is 100 percent on our group um 100 on us being the team we can be and we're not not been saying it all season we've really just scratched the surface on what i think we can become um these obstacles have taken longer for us to navigate through than i would have thought because they are little things that we don't do well. I feel like they're things that we've just got to commit to and it's got to be five guys on the floor at every moment committing to it. I feel like the group is certainly bought in from that angle. You know, if we win enough games, everything will be fine. If we don't, then, you know, this is a performance-based industry. I'm not shying away from us maybe underperforming to people's expectation. Um, we certainly don't have to perform to our own expectations. And our expectations will be higher than everybody. So, yeah, I'm not too concerned with all of that. That, that just comes out in the wash and that's part of the profession. It's a tough situation for them, and uh, they're, 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 like you mentioned, Kane, we, early on, we thought that they were going to be a lock for the playoffs, and uh, I think that, like everyone, they've had to deal with some issues along the way recently, not having Joe Chi, who, who's very much a, an integral part of what they're going to do, is, uh, it could be a factor, but five of the last six, they'd be very, very nervous, but I think it's always a little harsh just to point the finger at the coach, mm -hmm. uh, but... 
One thing where they do need to pick up, and it's been consistent uh, over the last couple of seasons with them, is that they have sometimes where defensively they just go missing. And you, you, they're, whether it's the defensive transition or what they're doing in the half court, the way in which, the, if they could solve that problem, then I think that they'd get a, a much more consistent performance. I think where they're struggling is sometimes he tries to play more. Than, he plays too many guys. Mm. When you're trying to play 10 or 11 guys, 10 guys in 40 minutes, it, they struggle with confidence uh, and consistency. And and, the, the, and then you got three guy, guys that can play point guard and you're trying to play all three of those guys. It hurts them. Now, we're all geniuses in hindsight, but I would probably play the six or seven or seven guys and stick with that group and go with them. Joe Chi, they're hoping to have back Saturday night. So he practiced during the week. But if they don't win <laughs> against Cairns on Saturday, oh. yeah. that might be it. Yeah. Can oh. you imagine? All right, on to the Perth Wildcats. And there is so much intrigue, Kane, surrounding this import in John Brown. He still hasn't had the clearance from FIBA yet, but he's been training with Perth. And coach Scott Morrison was asked about the John Brown situation in a post-match press conference. And it certainly got a little bit prickly. The team has been surrounded by this room about this guy potentially coming in. Has that, like, clouded the fact that, you know, you were playing two games this round? I don't know how that's relatable to anything that you're asking me. To be honest, I'm... If we had a one, I'd be in a good mood and I maybe could do this little song and dance again where I smile and tell a joke and pretend I don't know what's going on. It's, it's annoying. I'm tired of the questions. I was tired of them four days ago. It's not fair to the guys in the team. That, that's all anyone cares about. It's stupid. All right? That's the last time I'm even acknowledging that as a question. Like These guys are busting their ass out there every day. I go to a press conference, and it's eight minutes of some phantom legend guy that no one knows about or knows anything they're talking about. All you want to do is start some gossip or find something to write about. Learn about the game of basketball. Write about our failure to execute or our breakdowns on defense or anything of that nature. Okay, I'm tired of these questions. Next, if we sign someone or make a change, there's going to be an announcement. That's what Wade's over there for. He'll put an announcement out. We'll all hear about it. I'm sorry for this rant. I'm sure I'm going to get lots of criticism. I don't care. I did two weeks of a hotel quarantine with my family. I got sent away with the rest of the team for two months. And yet still, this is the most annoying thing that's happened all season. So just wait and see what happens. See, that's a man under pressure. You're talking about coaches, <laughs> talking about coaches being under pressure. You've lost two games at home, and mm. they're not used to losing at home. Mm. That was a legitimate question by the – by the, Of course. A legitimate question. Mm. You can't answer it. you got the guy training there. Obviously, the players are under pressure as well. But you you got you to come better than that. Well, I think it's a question that needs to be answered because uh, it, it is – as you say, it's legitimate. When you've got a new guy coming in – it's not just about the import that you're replacing that's hanging around. So Michael Fraser comes mm. out, John Brown the third yes. comes back in. <laughs> the other players. And, and and what it means is is what is it? The other even the other guys that are on the roster that aren't going to be removed, they're yeah. thinking, well, well, how's my role yeah, going to change? Where am I going to fit right. in? You know, is my minutes going to be down? How many shots am I going to get? All those things are absolutely legitimate things that the players have been feeling. Overall, I think it was a bit of deflection from Scott Morrison there because he understands that Michael Frazier and John Brown the third are practicing next to each other. So it's not the media's that's drumming up this controversy. They're playing and they're fully aware of what the team wants mm. to do. I spoke with Jeremy Loliga, the league commissioner, yesterday to ask whether an exemption is even a possibility. And the problem, and this has been the problem the whole time, is that the FIBA clearance hasn't come through. Uh, Unix Kazan in Russia is playing serious hardball uh, at the moment. And part of the problem for these Russian teams are that there is still American players yeah. signing with clubs in Russia. So these clubs are saying, well, there's nothing wrong. You can come and play here in Russia. So they're saying that there is no need to uh, implement the force. Uh, right, there's mature. nothing wrong. There's just a war going on. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, so they won't again. cancel the contract. So they're saying if you're going to play basketball, you're going to play for us. Now, this is where the frustration is coming in for the Wildcats. John Brown is in Perth. He doesn't want to go back to Russia and play for that team, and he's not going to. So this is where the stalemate has come from. But the league has said, and Jeremy said, if that clearance comes through and the Wildcats, which we assume they will, will apply for an exemption, he said they will take it on their merits when it comes. And the league does have, oh. and the, league does have the ability... To uh, let this through, there would be up controversy, up especially up Melbourne United. Oh, of course, and I want to look at the NBL ladder just quickly before we move on, because just to remind you that Melbourne United is on top, of course. But the Sydney Kings, Illawarra Hawks, and then the Perth Wildcats have dropped right down. We had penciled in those nine straight home games to finish the season, pretty yeah. much as wins. So to lose two is uh, well. 
I don't want to say it's catastrophic, but there is pressure, pressure mounting at Perth at the moment. It's a very, very close finals race. NBL Rookie of the Year, Kane. Who are the contenders? Who are we looking at? Because we've got four rounds left. Well, I think Luke Travers is probably the favourite at this point, and we'll get How into this. Now, hold on, hold we'll on, hold on, hold on, Kane. Usman <laughs> Jiang is another player, and and you you think you were fired up about Luke Travers, Isaiah <laughs> Liafa? No. How about what? that for a contender for rookie of the year? These guys played last year, didn't they play last year? How are they rookies? Is that, is that would have played 30-odd games, probably started in a, a lot of 32 games, 15 minutes per game last year. Well, what this is doing is make a mockery That's right. of Rookie of the Year. Yeah. Now, I understand that there's rules and regulations, and maybe those guys currently fit in those rules and regulations. Uh, so perhaps you've got to see that through if, if that's what the, the terms and conditions that you start the season in. But clearly something needs to be changed. Once you open the door like that, it's over. Look, Travis started in a championship series. Yeah, it won't change this season, but this was one of the questions I also threw to Jeremy and I said, is there a possibility that moving forward you have a similar rule to uh, perhaps the AFL where it's not necessarily rookie because... No one that watches basketball, covers basketball, played basketball, looks at Luke Travers as a rookie no. or looks at Isaiah Liafa as a rookie. So he said that they're open to, to changing this moving forward, but it's, it's a funny better one. Better be wildly open. They better open up. And, and <laughs> now, Kane, something popped up on social media that uh, I think had a lot of tongues wagging, and it was a Josh Green post of his Dallas Mavericks <laughs> teammate, uh, Luka Doncic, of course, wearing <laughs> Josh's Boomer's jersey. And look at the beanie pulled over his face. You didn't want to be identified. What is going on here? Has bet gone wrong? So this is year two for Josh Green in Dallas. And when I caught up with him a few weeks ago, I asked him whether he was uh, able to or whether it was fair game in a locker room for him to get stuck into Luka oh, Doncic about the bronze medal amazing. game. And he said he reminds him about it non-stop. <laughs> That's great. That's good. And, th and he said he had a surprise coming up for Luka Doncic. Maybe this was some kind of bet. Oh, Kane, I love your work. Thanks so much for being here. We can't wait to catch up with you next week. Yep, looking forward to it. All right, for all of Kane's brilliant work, go to ESPN.com.au. Still more to come. A big call on the other side of this break. You're watching The Jump. All right, time now for the Bulk Nutrients Big Call on the Jump. What have you got what this you got, week, well, Gabe? I don't know if it's a huge call. Oh, here we oh, go. Oh, you're tempering you expectations. No, 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 no. What's your big call? My big call is that uh, the Clippers could make some noise in the playoffs with Paul George coming back. Uh, for a guy who'd spent so much time on the sideline, first game back, he's come in and dropped 34 points, had six assists and uh, four steals. He is a game changer and... I'd be really nervous if I was uh, co coming up against a, a Clippers team that featured Paul George. What do you mean, make some noise? They'll win a game or two? Are they going to knock someone out? Win the whole Make thing? a big call. Come on, bro. I Get said the that they, that while well, the big call would oh. be that they're going to be really strong in the playoffs. <laughs> oh, that's a, I'm going to take your That's approach. such a massive call. Wow. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Paul George played one good game, and now you're giving him a, a, a well, when, Mate, he's been out of the game for oh, how long? Three months. He has, three hasn't months. played since December 22. He's yeah. He's no, he is. All right, we'll wait and see. We've got all of these big calls oh on record. That's not really it's been a call. massive week. We've got a big week of NBL so, so action cool. coming up. Thank you, you two. Go take this offline. Hey. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much for watching The Jump. We'll be back same time next week. Have a great weekend.